The Steam Deck is a masterwork of hardware and software. It's proof that having an operating system and hardware crafted together as one coherent product is a valid way to bring a PC to market. While it's been a minute since we've had some new and truly exciting software features for the Steam Deck, the deck's software is by no means finished. There are odd crashes and stability issues, gaps in features and oversights in implementation. That's why I'm making this video. Here are 10 missing features and important fixes that we still need for the Steam Deck. All right, first up, if you've ever used Bluetooth headphones with the deck, you'll know that it can leave something to be desired. But this isn't a problem that's exclusive to the Steam Deck. Bluetooth has notorious latency. There are many reasons for this, but the biggest issue by far is compressing the audio so that it can be transmitted over Bluetooth and then decompressing it back into audio on your headphones. Sometimes this process can take well over 300 milliseconds. That's a huge issue. 300 milliseconds is enough for virtually anyone to notice a discrepancy between what you're seeing and what you're hearing. And in a game, well, you can bet that that delay would be just as noticeable. So that's where the Aptex low latency codec comes in. It can reduce the compression time from 300 milliseconds down to just 40. Most people are not able to notice such lag. In fact, that's kind of in the middle of where most consumer TV panels are. I'd really like to see Valve include the Aptex codec on the Steam Deck so that those of us who are using Bluetooth can play lag free. All right, next up, this is a feature that I was very much anticipating with the Steam Deck OLED, Wake on Bluetooth. This allows you to turn your Steam Deck on with a Bluetooth device, so a controller, a mouse, a keyboard, etc. But some people don't actually like this feature, or perhaps they would like to be able to prevent the deck from turning on from a specific device. Uh, giving us the option to toggle which Bluetooth devices will wake up the deck and which ones won't, well, that would be a game changer. I know I have woken up my Steam Deck a few times on accident just by switching my mouse to another channel. So this would be a neat and a convenient feature for Valve to add. All right, this next one is a huge deal. We can already take screenshots of games by using the Steam button and hitting the right bumper at the same time. And screenshots are critical. But every desktop OS and all three consoles have built-in support for screen capture, video capture of your desktop or a window in it. But the deck does not, at least not in game mode. The way it would work is simple. Hold the Steam or the Quick Access Menu button and then hit the Select button. That would be this one right here and hitting that button would cause the Steam Deck to start recording its screen, and then hit it again to stop. Now, consoles keep a rolling recording of the last 30 seconds to up to a minute of gameplay, and then you're able to quickly save clips from that rolling cache. It would be awesome if there was an option to do this on the Steam Deck, maybe Steam Plus Start. Considering that there would be a CPU and power cost for this, this should be an option in the settings menu or the quick access menu that could be toggled on or off. However, I feel like this is a critical feature that Valve really does need to implement in game mode. It's probably the one that I've seen the most in the comments on my videos and even on Reddit. All right, now allow me a little self-indulgence and thank this video sponsor, me. I've got a video game coming out next week. That's Monday, May 6, 2024. Uh, if you're watching it after May 6, the game is already out. It's called Doodling's Arcade Sports Ball. It's a small, fun, and competitive game that crosses the tried and true arcade action of a game like Pong with the classic frenetic energy of Foosball. If this looks at all interesting to you, if this looks like your kind of game, use the links below to wishlist this game on Steam or bookmark this game on Itch. It's all greatly appreciated. And while you're down there, why not like that smash button? That's the best way to tell YouTube you want to see more videos just like this. You can also worship YouTube's engagement idol by leaving a comment. What features do you feel are missing from the Steam Deck? Leave me a comment and let me know. All right, now back to it. Okay, let's talk about performance. It's a huge deal on the Steam Deck. Pressing the quick access button gives us access to the performance menu, and we can go in here and we can tweak settings to get games running exactly how we want. We can enable per game performance profiles, so a game like Forza Horizon 5 has different settings than something like, say, Spelunky. But I think that we should be able to define our own performance presets. So let's say we created a max FPS profile. We give it that name. And what it does is it stores all of these settings. So we would disable the frame rate limiter. We would apply, you know, whatever TDP and GPU settings we wanted. And then on a per game basis, we'd be able to apply that profile 
to the game and make any changes we want to that game specifically. So we could apply the max FPS setting and then go in here and actually add a frame cap back. Uh, and then that would be applied just to the game. So basically we would be able to configure an arbitrary number of these presets in the performance menu and then apply them to any game and then tweak the specifics for that game there. So it would work like a starting point so that we don't have to fiddle with stuff all the time. This would basically allow us to predefine our settings, spend less time tweaking and more time playing. Making these profiles shareable, like how controller configs uh, are shareable would be a really nice touch. Uh, and allowing developers to set performance menu options for their games would also be a killer feature as long as we're able to override them. All right, next up, one thing that I saw a lot of people complaining about with the Steam Deck when it first launched uh, was the fact that games updated practically every time you turned the deck on. These weren't games getting new features from their developers. No, 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 this was the deck downloading precast shaders. So what does that even mean? Well, shaders allow the GPU to apply effects to the screen after an image has been rendered. However, there are many different kinds of GPUs out there with different shader architectures. So this means that games need to distribute their shaders in source form, and then they need to be compiled for your GPU specifically before or while you're playing the game. This is super annoying and waiting for these compilations to finish, especially while you're playing a game, it can degrade your experience and even the performance of the game that you're playing. Given that the Steam Deck has the same GPU across all models, Valve took it upon themselves to pre-compile shaders and then distribute them through Steam as updates for games. This improves your performance while playing on the deck, but it also causes updates to happen all the time. Truthfully, it's been happening less for me now, but that doesn't mean that it's not happening anymore. Uh, the more Valve can do to alleviate this, especially for folks who have metered internet connections, the better. I've tried my deck with many different USB-C hubs. The vast majority of them have just worked. This is at least when it comes to the USB side of most of these devices. Now, some of them have audio devices that simply don't work. Some of them have network interfaces that aren't detected. Others have HDMI and DisplayPort that simply aren't compatible. And that is what needs to be fixed here. Video out over USB-C is usually pretty good, but also it's not even close to perfect. Heck, I, I have the official docking station, and there are times where the deck just isn't in the mood and won't connect to my TV. Stabilizing the handshake to your TV, I know it's a pain in the ass, but it's something that is, I think, critical for the success of the Steam Deck going forward. Especially for me, where I'm always connecting my deck to my capture card and needing to record something for this channel, I run into this constantly, so I'd love to see this fixed. Next up, we have USB file transfer. Now, this would be a big deal because there's no simple, obvious way to transfer files to your deck from your PC. You would think that you could just like take the SD card out of your deck, pop it into your PC, and Bob's your uncle. But if you've formatted the SD card to work in game mode, this isn't going to work unless your PC is also running Linux. You could use a second SD card and switch to desktop mode, but this requires that you have a second SD card and it's also not intuitive in any way. And look, there are ways to do this. I've made several videos on this topic. Number one, they're not easy or simple. Number two, they require some extra level of knowledge or you have the ability to follow a guide or even the knowledge on how to look up how to do something, which some people just, you know, you can't put it past them. Uh, and then number three, they're not built into the deck, right? So the question is, what would be easy? I think that connecting your deck to your PC via USB would be the easiest and simplest solution. And there are ways to do this right now, but it requires that you set up something like Decky Loader. Wouldn't it be nice if game mode just detected that a USB host device wanted to connect and it would pop up a little, how do you want to connect screen? And then you could choose either like MTP or mass storage device, just like an Android device does. And if you had security set up, you'd make your choice and then have to type in your pin or whatever, and then your PC would be able to transfer files to the deck. It would show up just like any other drive letter. That would be awesome. And I think that it's sorely needed on the deck. Okay, next up, this one is something that I have been calling for for ages, download play. 
Now, this would be a feature that Valve would have to build into Steam, not just the Steam Deck. It would also require that developers would have to actually implement it if they wanted to support it in their games. But it could be huge and really fun. Imagine you're at a LAN party, not just with like a Steam Deck, but also with a PC or a laptop, and your friend invites you to play a game that you don't own. So you accept their request, and then your PC starts downloading the files that you need to play the game with them from their PC, all done over the local network. And then suddenly, you're in the game. Now, as I said, developers would need to actually implement this, and they would be able to put in whatever limitations that they would want on download play clients. I think back to the DS and the 3DS. Nintendo, Nintendo of all companies, are the ones that pioneered download play in the first place. So games like Mario Kart 7 offered this feature. And essentially, uh, in Mario Kart, players would download the game and then they'd only be able to play as like the shy guy, for example. They wouldn't get a choice of cart or character, but you'd still be playing the game, a limited experience of the game on your device. Basically, the way it worked on the 3DS was that there was a host and a client. The host had the game cartridge and then the game would advertise an ad hoc Wi-Fi network. And then the client would connect to that ad hoc network and download only the files it needed to play that specific map or level or whatever session, we will call it. And then once that session was over, those files would be deleted, right? So if Valve were to make this into a feature, the same thing would apply here. Developers would be able to set exactly how download play would work for download play clients. And, uh, and then, you know, you'd just go to a LAN party and be able to download just little portions, little slices of a game on your PC. So Steam Deck or like a laptop or something. And the thing is, Steam already has a ton of the infrastructure in place to support this. For example, they recently rolled out downloading games from another PC on your own local network. And that is crucial here because this wouldn't be for playing games with each other over the internet. Maybe it would, but in my mind, this is really only a thing for LAN parties and Steam Deck owners, right? But critically, this would have to work in offline mode since it would allow Steam Deck owners who don't have an internet connection to play with each other. So if you're out in the woods and you don't have a uh, LTE signal on your phone that you're sharing as a hotspot, you could just play this with a bunch of friends uh, around a campfire. I think that would be sick. I don't know, if any company could do download play and do it right, it would be Valve. I mean, for Christ's sake, Nintendo of all companies is the one that created this idea in the first place. And so if Nintendo can do it, Valve can do it and they can do it way better. Okay, this is a quick but important one. We need to be able to download games with the screen off, especially on the OLED deck. Look, we need to be able to start a download and then hit the power button and have the game download with the deck mostly off. The Xbox 360 could do this for Christ's sake, so why not the Steam Deck? Okay, and finally, the most broken thing about the deck is not actually software related, really. It's the verified program. It's quite often maligned, and there's no less than too many games that have a verified rating, only to have an update from the developers break something for deck players. The verified program is great in theory. The criteria for a verified game makes sense, but in practice, it leaves a lot to be desired. That's why we need something else, something better, something that encourages developers to actually build their games for the Steam Deck. And that's where the Made for Deck program comes in. Now, the criteria here is simple. First, a game must qualify as deck verified, meaning it meets the deck verified criteria. Then the game must implement the enhanced Steam Cloud save features on suspend and resume if it's applicable. Then a game must have optimized TDP and GPU clock profiles set by the developer. Then the game must have default graphics settings that target at least 40 FPS. Next, the game must have a specific version of Proton that they build and test against extensively. And finally, the game must have a specific asset pack called a depot in Valve's backend that is optimized for the Steam Deck and consumes minimal storage. By default, the deck would download this version of the game's assets, which would omit huge textures that would never be compatible with the deck's hardware. Though I do believe it should be possible to toggle downloading the standard PC assets from the library entries option menu. 
Now, essentially having a game be made for deck would mean that it was specifically optimized for a great experience on the Steam Deck. But uh, I don't think that it's enough to just have a little badge on a game store page. No, I, I think that Valve really should provide a monetary incentive for developers who do this, right? Who jump through these hoops. Maybe sales on a Steam Deck have a higher revenue split with the developer. Maybe Valve just pays out bonuses based on Steam Deck sales per game. There are a lot of ways to crack that nut. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. But it would also be critical to have made for deck titles be monitored uh, to make sure that they are always aligning with the uh, criteria above, right? I mean, otherwise we're in the same situation we're in with the, uh, the deck verified program. I don't know, I I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, feed the engagement monster and let me know what pain points you're experiencing on the Steam Deck still. Or what features do you feel are missing? I'd love to hear from you. That's everything that I wanted to touch on in this video. Thank you so much to my members for their continued support. You can use the links below to support the show on Patreon or Ko-Fi or Coffee, or however you pronounce that. Don't forget to get subscribed and I'll see you in the next one.